Hi, I'm Benjamin Francis Lefwich here in the six, and you're watching Ambi. Love. Hey everyone, it's Leisha from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Benjamin Francis Lefwich. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. You're now touring North America. Just let me know how everything's been treating you so far. Yeah, it's been amazing, you know. I've, I've toured her a bit when I was younger, and we're coming back, and the whole tour pretty much is sold out, and we're playing with beautiful musicians and meeting beautiful people, and the scenery is beautiful, and the food is good, and I'm happy, you know. And <laughs> it's just like a dream for me, so yeah, I'm pleased to be here. Well, what was your initial reaction when you found out that so many of these shows were sold out? Just humbled, you know, really humbled, and it's kind of unexpected, um, but. It's a compliment to the songs, you know, so I just want to do my best each night and sing as well as I can and be as emotionally connected as I can be with the songs. And yeah, I'm just really grateful, you know, I love coming here and I'm inspired personally by a lot of the music and artistry from, from this part of the world. So it's a treat. Well, this morning on your way into Canada, you tweeted, on the road to Toronto, my favorite city in the world. And before we were chatting and you're like, I fucking love Toronto. So <laughs> yeah. What is it about this city that you love? You know what, I've, I've been, this was the first place I ever played outside of England. We did like Canadian Music Week, probably like five or six years ago, maybe. And um, I remember flying in, listening to Over My Dead Body on, on Take Care. And it was just an amazing moment. You know, I love so much of the music from here. The energy here is amazing. I feel like you notice a difference in pace from, from other places coming here, you know, and yeah, beautiful people, beautiful music, beautiful scenery. The, the, I'll show you after the interview about the background picture on my phone is a picture of a, bl a black bear that I took out the window of a car when I was in Nelson. Really? Playing a show, yeah, five years ago. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, just something just kind of like calm, you know, and everyone seems to, it's a liberal as well, you know, your, your, your prime minister or president, I don't know the right way, he seems like an absolute legend and you kind of, there's videos of him dancing around in the street yeah. wearing, wearing dresses and stuff, you know, which, which I love. Well, it's a very exciting time for you right now because you're dropping an album very yeah. soon after the rain. So what are your plans to celebrate its release? To celebrate its release, just lots of, lots of touring, you know. On the day it comes out, I don't know where I'll be. We'll yeah. Probably in London somewhere doing like a release show. But um, yeah, I'm really proud of the album and I'm, I'm grateful for the reaction to the songs so far. And it's definitely the most honest songs I've ever written. I'm just psyched, you know, there's lots of touring. We're kind of touring up till Christmas, so it's just non-stop. And yeah. no, uh, no special plans, you know, I might buy myself a cake or something, you know. But <laughs> But nothing, nothing crazy, you know. Well, how does it feel to be releasing new music? Cause it's been five years since your debut. Yeah, it feels amazing. You know, I, I do this because I have to, you know, and songwriting for me is kind of like an audio will, you know. I feel like what would happen if something happened and I wasn't able to write anymore or wasn't alive, whether I've got everything out that I needed to say. And um, of course, as soon as I finished in the booth on, on After the Rain, I was like, oh, I need to go, you know. But <laughs> yeah, there comes a time when you have to draw a line and I'm super proud of this album and I'm looking forward to doing the next one. And um, <clears throat> I think it's, um, yeah, it's kind, kind of where I want to be, you know. I never feel any real mad rush to, to make music or make a record. I never set out to do this, you know. It kind of happened that it ended up as a job, you know, which is always a, the craziest thing. So yeah. I might release my third album in a year's time or 10 years time or 20 years time or never. I'll release it when I'm proud of it. And it's a body of work that I think is worthy of sharing with people and and um, and standing up next to all the other amazing artists that I love and that inspire me, you know. So you don't quite feel like you've said everything you have to say yet? No. No. Nowhere no. near it. No. <laughs> There'll be more music. That's good for us music lovers. Yeah, yeah, That's there'll, be, there'll be more music for sure. <laughs> and more songs from the After the Rain sessions that I haven't actually made onto the album as well. That okay. we'll, um, I was thinking about this in the van. I was thinking about this song we wrote for After the Rain. And now I'm like, man, that should have been on there, you know. But we've, we've got it in the bag, so we'll do another version of it or something, you know. So. Well, there's a song off of After the Rain. It's called Summer, a new single of yours. And I just love how laid back and summery the track feels. It's almost like a little bit whimsical. So can you just tell me a little bit sure. about that song? Yeah, it's a song I wrote with my friend Joe. We were on tour together in the UK and living together on a tour bus. And at the time, my dad was ill and Joe came and moved into my house with me. And we set up a studio together in my living room. Um, and we wrote a load, a load of songs, probably like 20 songs. And that song is definitely one of the most upfront messages that I've ever, you know, kind of felt confident enough to 
to sing and it's a, it's about hope for the future you know it's been a long hard year and i've been waiting for the summer to come so i wait here waiting for the light of the sun and whenever i'm singing that i i close my eyes and emotionally i put myself in the zone of sitting in my back garden in york and and looking you know in york you can always see to the far you know to the yorkshire moors in the distance and so i put myself in that space and it's um yeah, it's just, it's my, you know, you know, Springsteen's got a song called Waiting on a Sunny Day, right? That's very, like, up front. I'm waiting, waiting on a sunny day. And um, that summer is my, my version of that, you know. Kind I love of that. Hope for the future. It's very, a lot of my other songs go deeper and have more angles and, and different twists and turns. But for me, you know, I needed to write that song. I really needed to write that song. It's not a song I could have written on the first album either, you know, it's... I think it's quite, I was talking to my friend in New York about this and he was like, man, it's quite bold like to, you know, have a song called Summer. And I was like, yeah, but that's, that was kind of where I was at with it. You know, I was yeah. just kind of like, didn't really care for like over ambiguous lyrics at that particular moment and just wanted to kind of say how I felt. Um, and with this, you know, the support of people around me and other musicians that I respect, I was able to get something out that I'm really proud of, you know? Well, another song on the album that's super cool, and you also dropped a very neat video for it, is Mayflies. That yeah. video is so surreal. I, f yeah, I, thought, I yeah. felt like you were taking me into like a little fairy world. There's yeah, sprinkling yeah. dust everywhere. Yeah, totally. What was it like putting that together? Yeah, it was amazing. We did that on the day off on our last UK tour in between York, which is my hometown, the York show, and Manchester. And um, it was in a, you know, like a proper film studio, and the, all the actors and actresses were amazing. And the director, Jake, and his partner, Maddie, who was helping out were, were great and yeah it was mad it was kind of like being on some kind of mad trip and everyone's everyone's falling in and out of love around you and mad then there's mad passion going on and mad energies and and they were all real couples for the mo most of them in fact were real couples um which i really think added to the the energy of the video and i love the colors and yeah i love how how mad it is but it's kind of like it's about being in that moment of temptation and mad kind of dangerous energy and just kind of observing it, you know? So I feel like it, it um, is accurate to the message of the lyric in the song. And you brought up bright and vibrant colors there and the album cover, it's like this little town that I feel like, did you envision that? Is that based yeah. on a town yeah. you already know? Yeah, totally. It's, kind of, it's more based on the world and you know my experiences of different places over the past couple of years when I've been putting this album together, which is mainly Yorkshire, London, Sydney, a bit of touring in America and, ca and Canada. Um, so that's meant to kind of cover all those bases. And we worked with an artist called Jade Sprankland. Her artist's name is Sprankenstein. And she's amazing. Me and her sat down in the office for, um, in the label office in London for like four or five hours. And it was like one of the most intense, honest chats <laughs> I've ever had. She was just like, tell me everything about yourself and your life and your fears and hopes and, you know, what's going on. And <clears throat> I opened up and I feel like she really, um, she really accurately, um, portrayed you know what I was thinking about and the energies that I was that I was referencing in the songs with pretty much no exceptions you know I mean we, there was a bit of back and forth on like I'll oh, change his color or I don't want a hat we'd be wearing a hat there or I don't <laughs> want a bird in that corner of the sky or whatever you know but she um she's amazing and she's really you know really well respected at home and it's amazing to work with a visual artist across a whole campaign because for me, the tie, you know, audio visual tie up is the most powerful kind of way of portraying a message. You know, it's like I always say, you know, it's like when you're watching a sad, you know, when you're watching a sad movie or there's a sad scene in a movie, right? And it's getting you and then a sad song comes in. I feel like the song, it's like someone stood on the edge of a cliff and the song just goes, and then, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you just finished. Yeah. It's just like floods of tears and mad scenes. So, um, yeah, she's amazing. That was put perfectly, I must say. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, just to wrap things up today, is there anything you want to say to all of your fans who are going to be viewing our interview? Just um, thanks so much for supporting me, and I'm mad appreciate it, and I'm really proud of the songs, and I love a lot of other people's music, and I love my own music, and I especially love Toronto and the Six, and um, it's a real, real fucking pleasure <laughs> to be here, so thanks so much. Yeah, just thank you so much for your time today. Pleasure. Thanks. And remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogia.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite artists. We'll see you next time.